All right, we've got a repair job to do for Jonathan DeWitt. He's been a longtime viewer of mine, and Jonathan is the uh, guy who has given me the transformer that I needed for the shop and also uh, recently some more electrical supplies so that I can get my uh, high voltage circuit run out here in the shop. So anyway, whenever we were discussing that, he told me that he had this job right here that he needed somebody to help him do and he asked me if I'd be interested in helping him so I took it in and um, we're gonna see if we can get him fixed up and so what we got is if I remember right this is a crankshaft and a, a pilot shaft out of out of a Kubota Kubota tractor I think I think it's a Kubota engine and what has happened is on the end of the crankshaft here where the pilot bearing goes or the pilot bushing I, f I forget what you what you consider that but the pilot bearing maybe I think it come out and then so that shaft the shaft right here was just wallering around inside there and you can see just how uh, beat up it is it's in really rough shape so what he asked me to do is set this up bore this install a bushing and then the shaft right here uh, he wanted this built up and uh, turned back to the correct size. This would be 14 millimeter right here. So I think that's what we're going to do. Now you could, you really could just turn this down and clean it up and then make the bushing to fit, but then you're going to have like an odd size there. So I think I want to do like he suggested and just make it standard and just have a standard size bore back inside this crank. So what we're going to start with is the pilot shaft right here. I want to do a, uh, a build up on this right here. And what I'm going to do is utilize my uh, Utiloy UltraJet torch. It's a torch, kind of like spray welding, but you, uh, you build it up with the powder like in, a, in an overlay fashion there. And I've done a couple samples right here because I haven't done a whole lot with the Utiloy. And what I've done is I just kind of mimicked this shaft right here and did a couple of samples. I started with this one right here. I turned the end just a little bit, about 10,000 thunder, and went ahead and built it up, built the ends of it up, and then turned it, turned it back to size. And starting to figure out, you know, what it takes to really get it done right. This is the last one that I did uh, here today. I've got one inclusion right there, and this one turned out pretty good. I actually beveled the end of it kind of heavily you know, see, you got all this wear on that shaft right there. So I beveled that in and then built it up with the, uh, with the powder there. And this one did pretty good. So what I'm learning is that this is, as you're building this up and moving, rotating around on a shaft, you've really got to keep it clean or it doesn't want to bond very well. So uh, some more learning experience from me right there. But it's starting to turn out pretty good, and I think I know what it's going to take. So... We're going to start with this one and do just that and uh, this will probably be a separate video we'll get this one done first and then we'll move on to the crankshaft so we're going to start with this we'll probably turn this slightly turn it down a little bit and then we're going to go over to our torch and start doing our our build up with our Utiloy ultra jet all right first thing we're going to do is go ahead and clean this shaft really good you can see the splines are uh, packed full of grease so we're going to clean this really well because you don't want any of that around your uh, welding area. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do our, our undercut there. And I uh, forgot to mention this earlier. This, uh, this, is, this shaft has been heat treated. It's pretty hard. So you can take a file and a file just really does not want to cut it. So that's, that's a hardened shaft. And another reason why I want to build it up using my Utiloy torch so we have a, an area that's built up that's machinable. If you go in there and start welding on this with your TIG welder and adding filler metal, it's just going to be super hard there. All right, so this is where it ends. This is an undercut right in this area here. I'm just going to take a little undercut on my end just to about right here and stop. And I've already mic'd it, and I've got my size written down of what we're going to make it to. So the uh, area that runs inside of the crank is actually just right in this general area right here. So this is kind of like unworn. So let's see if we can, uh, I'm just going to do like a ten thousandths. So 
ten thousands cleanup pass. And that that's already worn down about ten or so. So that'll give me approximately twenty thousandths on that outer end there to uh, you know have an area that's uh, soft and machinable. So generally these uh, this hardened material like this, it's uh, it's tough to turn it even with carbide. But if you slow it down like I'm doing now, I'm running 180 RPM, you know, and we got a 14 millimeter shaft there. But usually, if you slow it down, you can uh, you can cut it with some carbide. I think that's going to be good right about there because it doesn't go down that far so and then once, once we turn it down hopefully it'll all it'll all blend together there so this is the torch I'm going to use right here this is my Utiloy ultra jet and uh, it's made to be used with Utiloy type powders right here and I'm going to be using this one today this is chrome tech 10680 and this is a good um, this is a good general purpose build up powder for uh, steel and cast iron, things like that. Uh, I'll tell you what it says right here on the uh, package. High strength, super machinable, joining and overlaying nickel based microflow alloy for steel, stainless cast iron, and nickel based alloys. And it's got a Rockwell hardness of 10 to 20 and tensile strength of 75,000 PSI. All right, so this is the one that we are gonna be using for today's Build up work. All right, let's get this thing started. I should have the torch already regulated. We've got a trigger that you can pull there to turn it off. Let it kind of settle out here. And then I've also got my, uh, I got a nice clean stainless steel brush right here because one of the things that I'm discovering is on this job anyway when I was practicing on the other shaft as you build up if you start moving around you start building up a little bit of scale behind it you know where the area that you haven't welded yet it's got to be clean so I'll take it and I'll brush it and clean that scale off before I make make the uh, next build up pass there I think we are ready to roll here I'm not really using any gloves because I this is just a small delicate operation here. I'm not really needing them. Just got a little bit of powder that's still just kind of falling down through there from the last uh, practice weld there. Just getting a preheat in. I'm going to start on that very end and try to get that end built up. Put a little bit of powder down to get it bonded. It's doing pretty good there. Set the torch down. See, we got the stand there so that you can set it. And we are going to rotate this around a little bit. Keep building up that end of the shaft.
you can really work tight areas, corners really well with this. This is the smallest tip, by the way. And I am just feathering that trigger little by little and just letting a little bit of that powder come out. I'm not holding it down and uh, really letting it flow through there. I'm just a little at a time. And again, this is still practice mode for me after uh, getting a little bit of training from uh, our eutectic rep. Clean that scale off. work it from the side up and I'm coming off so you got to let it cool don't let it get too hot and it starts to crystallize and fall around everywhere try to group off there if you get it too hot all right one more little section here Okay, I think that's, that looks pretty good there on the end. That looks pretty good. Make sure I'm still in frame. Looks like we're still right there. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and start our, uh, our linear passes just down the top of it here. Move it more. And I'm not worried about masking that, um, that spline because this is not putting out the kind of overspray that you might think it is. It'll just, it'll wire brush right off there, whatever dust is on there. Just getting a little bit of preheat on it. Looking pretty good.
Need a little bit more than what that brush could handle. I think we got it. I went all the way around, so I'm going to go grab my calipers and um, do some measuring and make sure that we're um, that we're built up enough. I think we're going to be good to go up there. Let me see if I can get some more some more measurements in here on this. Right around it's measuring right around 590 to a little over 600 so I think we got her I think it is uh, ready to go we'll probably just leave it right there I'm gonna go put it in front of the fan and let it let it cool lights probably blowing you out there so go let it cool down and then go back to the lathe and start doing our turning and then here's that uh trigger setup I was talking about. If you want to leave your torch set up the way you want, just pull that trigger and then you can uh, undo it and light it up again. Okay, we're cooled off there and we're ready to go and turn it on and I've got a little bit of that spray in the end of the shaft there so I'm going to try to clean it out with a center drill and this could very well damage the center drill, but I need to get that, that build up out of there. Really just cleaning it. We're not going to try to cut it. Just like that, right there. Okay, that's good and clean. We'll put our live center in there now. All right, first we need to go ahead and face the end off. Again, I just want to see if I can just clean it up. Okay, that looks good. Okay, we're ready to turn now. Just got to get a cut established, get it round so that we can mic it and see where we're at on our size. I can get a measurement right there. Just kind of put me where I want I see where I want to go. So we're at 587 right there. So actually we got four um, about eight, I'm sorry, forty thousandths to come off. Go ahead and take another 20. See if we can clean it up now. I got my fingers crossed that it's going to clean up all the way. It looks like it is. It's, it's sometimes it's really hard to tell when you're doing build-up work if you've got enough on there. That's looking good. Yeah, there's still a couple lows, but not bad at all. That's going to clean up with what we got to take off there. So, we still got. I wrote down the original size. They got it at uh, 547. Yep. 20 more thousandths. Go ahead and kick it up one more notch here. Thank you. 
Our turning turned out really good. I don't really see any uh, bad spots. Maybe there's one little spot right there, but it ain't gonna matter there. And then I, I didn't have quiet enough on the corner to make that a sharp uh, build up there, you know, with the turning, but that looks really good. We're just gonna go ahead and hit chamfer it. Just like that. That looks good. So we've got it at um, I've got it at 549 right there. So we got it two thousandths under a uh, 14 millimeter nominal. I'm going to go ahead and do a little polishing on it to brighten it up and make it look good, and then we'll be done with this. All right, guys, I'm real happy with the way that this turned out. It welded up real nicely. And I do have a couple of really, really tiny inclusions. There's one right there. All right, there's a little, there's a little speck in there, but not bad. Um, this is actually the best one that I've done out of uh, these test welds right here. These three, so this being the fourth one, I'm glad I got a little practice in because it, uh, it it just takes a little practice to get the right feel and the right manipulation of the torch so that you don't overheat it and uh, you know just mess it up. So real happy with that, and it looks good. I really think it looks pretty good. So that's going to be it for the shaft repair. So we'll come back and I'll we'll do another video on uh, doing the crankshaft here. We'll set this up in the lathe. We'll have to use our steady rest to hold it. And then get in here and uh, bore it, machine a bush and press it in to uh, fit the, the shaft in there. All right? I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's an exciting day here in the shop. I just received a package that I've been very excited and uh, it's been very highly anticipated. Something that was sent to me by Scott, the essential craftsman. Most of you guys probably know Scott. He's got a very awesome YouTube channel. I just love Scott and I'm so proud that uh, I can call him a friend and he and I have uh, collaborated a little bit here in the uh, recent past where I helped him machine a vice handle for a Wilton vice that him and his son Nate are going to be restoring soon and whenever I was talking to Scott in uh, actually 2018's Go to the Land Festival I had talked to him about the idea that I had about making some type of forging, you know, blacksmith style forging with some 4140 chips that I had saved from a while back, some uh, shafts that I had turned at work. And I had a, you know, I had a couple boxes of them that I saved with hopes that one day maybe I could do something with them like some kind of forging project. So I, uh, whenever I first met Scott in person and talked to him, he sounded really excited about the idea of giving that a try and doing a uh, what they call a canister weld where they take a bunch of different metals and and uh, put them inside of a, a metal case that's welded up and then they heat it up and forge it so Scott decided to take on that challenge and he made something for me and he's already got this video of, of what he built here over on his uh, YouTube channel so I'll have the link there check, go check that out it was a fantastic video it, it pretty much put a tear in the eye uh, whenever you watch it. I shared it with my family and friends and everybody just absolutely loved it and, and immediately fell in love with Scott. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get this box opened up and uh, show you guys what he has made for me here. And uh, he had uh, texted me, or emailed me, I'm sorry, uh, whenever he was thinking about what he wanted to make and uh, gave him some different ideas of some you know, sort of like hobbies and things that I do. And he knows that we are now 
uh, Abby and I are, you know, we like to camp. And we have the, uh, the new camper. So this is what he come up with to uh, make for me out of those 4140 chips that I sent him. Boy, would you look at that. How cool is that right there, man? What Scott has made is uh, what he calls a, um, I want to say Boy Scout axe, but um, this is, I don't think it's a Boy Scout axe. axe. What it is, is uh, it's an axe sized for a younger person. Not, not, like, not like a full size man, but a younger person. It's a smaller, more compact axe. Something that you can uh, easily just keep in the back of your truck under the seat or in the camper or wherever. Or you can just hang it up on the wall and use it at the shop here. But look at this right here, man. This is the forging that he made. And you can see, I believe the dark, the dark spots in here are the 4140 chips that I give him. You can see them there. So it's, uh, I guess it would be considered a type of Damascus steel. So he made it, he, uh, you know, shaped the handle to fit on there. Look, he's got his touch mark there on the top. And he went to one of his friends that does leather work. I believe he makes uh, saddles for horses and he had to make this sheath right here for the end of the for the end of the axe. Red Hawk maker, Steve Harris, is what his touch mark says right there. What a beautiful piece of craftsmanship right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, end of the, the axe here. That is so cool. Razor sharp edge on it. It's so fantastic to have an idea like this, you know, just have some kind of idea to use with a leftover piece of scrap and somebody takes their skill and their knowledge and turns it into something artistic. Just a wonderful job, Scott. I love the way he did the handle. He put a little bit of the uh, he touched it with the flame, you know, his torch to kind of darken it up a little bit. And then he rubbed it down with uh, boiled linseed oil, I believe. It is just beautiful. I absolutely love it. It's so nice that you want to just hang it on the wall and appreciate it, you know. But I'm actually going to put this to use. We're not just going to, it's not going to be a wall queen. We're going to put this in the, uh, in the camper. And now whenever I need to uh, do some splitting for firewood or whatever, I'm going to have this axe to, uh, to use and I'll never forget where it come from, who made it and the uh, artistic skill that went into creating this axe right here. This is so cool. Scott, thank you very much. This is such a wonderful gift. I really, really appreciate the time that you put into this. I really enjoyed the video. Uh, all of my family members watched it. They loved the video. Thank you for all the, uh, you know, heartfelt, words and uh, kindness that you portrayed in that video towards me and i look forward to our our friendship and i really look forward to visiting you one of these days out in oregon and seeing your beautiful part of the world thank you very much scott all right we're going to give our axe very first test cut hopefully i won't miss and make myself look like a fool Got a piece of oak there. We'll see what we can do. There we go. Not really counting much of a split, but uh, we're getting there. Let's try it again.
think it's going to work, Scott. This will be handy in the uh, campgrounds. Usually, whenever they buy, usually whenever you buy the uh, firewood, it comes in big chunks like that right there. So this will work great for uh, splitting them up. All right. Well, I'm definitely no pro at splitting wood. Something that you got to do quite a bit to get a good feel and everything, but. Our new essential craftsman axe. I think it's going to get the job done in fine fashion. I love it. <laughs>